So when we're in that first phase, the 20 grams of carbs, we're going to be in ketosis with that amount of carbs. And as we go to phase two and phase three, I think that becomes questionable. What I'm getting at here is how big of a therapeutic benefit are people getting from ketosis? Or is that just a side effect of having the carbs low and keeping the insulin down? Well, there's a, a phenomenon of um, which kind of makes sense when you think about it. Our bodies burn what we feed it, you know, for fuel. So it, it, uh, the gas metaphor of putting gas in a car is easy. I mean, it's just gas and it's a car. Well, well, what we uh, eat can be loosely categorized as carbs and fat as the fuel sources, and protein really doesn't get used much for for energy. So you can be a, a carb burner or a fat burner. If you want to lose fat mass off your body, lose weight, reverse diabetes, you want to keep the carbs super low, be a fat burner. Um, when you get it to 10, 20% of your diet is carbs, you're basically going to burn 10 to 20% in your body as carbs. So the, the amount you burn matches the amount you eat. And so if you're no longer trying to lose your fat mass, you can increase the carbs because you're not trying to burn fat inside. You can burn carbs as well. Uh, so the extent to which someone's in ketosis, you can measure it yourself, breath, blood, or urine. Uh, but in general, the uh, 20 grams or less, everyone's in ketosis. 50 grams or less, maybe 50% or less are in ketosis, 70 grams per day total, not net, pretty much nobody's in ketosis. And, and um, you know, I, I'm watching the science develop uh, in terms of ketones being good and healthy and anti-inflammatory, but I'm not going to sign off yet, like with the confidence of a drug, prescription drug, that, that it's, you have to be in ketosis the rest of your life because you'll be healthier. I don't think we understand the nutrition and the effects that well yet. I am comfortable to say you know, with monitoring, sure, I think it's okay if you never eat carbs again, which makes me even kind of passively tolerant of the, the whole carnivore craze going on, because if you do it right, you're getting all the nutrition you need and you're not getting many carbs at all. But uh, and, and the health benefits sometimes are just they're unbelievable. I mean, going from bedridden to uh, normal, you know. Uh, so I think the carb level you have to think of. You got to burn those carbs, and if you're going to eat more of them, that just means you're not going to be burning fat off your body. You can get to an equilibrium where you don't have measurable ketones over and beyond what a higher carb eater might have. Uh, but then, even then, the ketone level in the blood doesn't tell you how much ketone you're burning. So, you know, it's like the, a level at a dam. You know, you're, the dam level can be held constant, even though you have water coming in the top and out of the bottom. Uh, so even measuring ketones is fraught with the idea that, that it doesn't tell you the flux. The flux is the term of how much is coming in and then how much is coming out, kind of the, the through Put of it. Um, but um, I, I personally don't measure ketones and, and have not made changes to make sure I'm in ketosis all the time. I do know some scientists that have made that kind of commitment. And, and uh, even at a recent conference, I asked a panel uh, of experts if they measured their own ketones and if they asked their patients to. And, and there was a range. One of the doctors said, well, this is a lifestyle for me. Whenever I check, I know I'm in ketosis, so she doesn't have to check. Um, uh, and then another person said, well, yeah, I, I, I monitor and check, but not for ketones. I check my blood glucose. Uh, and glucose is a, a marker. Uh, if the glucose is low you're, and you're not eating many carbs, then your ketones are probably going to be a little higher. And then two of the panelists didn't measure ketones at all in themselves anymore. Uh, so I think you'll find a range. There's always early adopters uh, in any kind of new thing, and there are those who are obsessing of their, their ketone levels, and and uh, I don't uh, do that again. But my entree, my, my introduction to this field, again, was 20 years ago when you couldn't monitor all of these things. Uh, and maybe I got comfortable without 
doing it and maybe personality wise i'm just not someone who needs to know as somebody who's been in this world for such a period of time you mentioned not checking your ketone levels but are you somebody that sticks to a certain phase of your diet are you a stage one guy stage two uh talk about how that's evolved as well over the years yeah well so i i'm uh, um <laughs> I, I personally i'm a scientist so i got into this actually traveling to visit other doctors who had worked it out, learning how to do a clinical trial uh, as a method to to look at nutrition scientifically like it were a drug. So we got uh, um, that assembled the information from Dr. Atkins, Dr. Eads, Dr. Bernstein, Dr. Rosedale, came up with clinical research to basically validate what they were saying. And I learned how to do a low-carb diet over 20 years ago to learn uh, kind of how do I coach? How do I tell people? So I learned the eat it in the outside of the grocery store, you know, go to zero carb items as a, as a rule um, and all those kinds of things. And um, I never had a large weight journey. So maybe, maybe 20 pounds personally, I never had diabetes. Uh, and so metabolically I can handle carbs, but it's just easier for me to, to not eat carbs. I, mean, I just don't have to worry <laughs> about, about the weight, the scale. The, and so what I'll do, I'll go, you know, I'd say 99% of the time I don't eat many carbs at all. But if I'm, you know, with friends and socializing, I, I go on, go on a, a low carb cruise with people. I may have some more carbs and I kind of think of it like, would you ever go out and, uh, you know, have a cigar with your buddies if you're out, you know, golfing or playing poker or something, you know, if you're, yeah, well, every now and then that's kind of the way I think of carbs now is that it's, it's not the healthiest thing to do, but it's a social way uh, of, it's certainly a way that I learned. And, and even today, you know, I don't know what happened this Valentine's day. I, I had a couple of these um, candy hearts and, you know, if you ask, oh, I had one heart. Well, that really meant one bag. I mean, I, I can't stop. And, and you know, that I grew up with Halloween candy, with mounds of it. And really, I, I'm like most people, uh, a partial carb sugar addict. Uh, and I just have learned to stay away from that stuff. Or if I have it, don't have it very long. Uh, but um, the other thing is I, I drink alcohol, kind of the old um, school the, and also having grown up in a uh, in Wisconsin, which I think is a kind of an alcohol produce, alcoholic producing state, perhaps well a lot of the European influence there um, and reading research about having wine or, or resveratrol in of course that's with carb eaters. All those studies are among carb eaters. Um, that is part of my lifestyle. And, and I, from some personal health issues, I haven't been able to exercise much. You know, uh, so I've learned that if, if I can't exercise for a period of time, I'd cut the carbs down. If I am going to exercise a little more, I can be a little more liberal with the carb, have a little more carbs. Uh, but to me, it's just easier to stick to zero carb things or, or to um, uh, have... Uh, uh, not much of the super high carb items are, and, uh, but I'm, I know, you know, a quarter cup of berries, is going to be five carbs. So, uh, you know, a teaspoon of sugar is five carbs, you know, a, an alcoholic drink, whether it's beer, wine, a hard liquor is going to be five carbs. So there's also sort of a, you know, if I'm going to have a, a yogurt that has five carbs, a little piece of fruit at the bottom, I just don't do that much uh, in one day. Uh, but I, I think there are a lot of ways to do it, a, a, a lot of ways to be healthy. And I, the common theme seems to me is keeping the glucose and insulin low. And you can do that, you know, as a, as a meat vegetarian or as a, as a omnivore or as a vegetarian. It's just you want to avoid things that make the glucose and insulin uh, domain go up. If you enjoyed that clip, press here for the full episode. I'll see you over there. I've had people, even if they're, they've been on uh, insulin for 20 years, get off the insulin in as little as eight weeks. The weight loss happens about one to two pounds per week. My philosophy is to get it to work the first time.